Good day. Uh, my name is Marco Bertaccini from AEB. Today I'm going to tell you a little bit about a study that AEB has been doing um, with the University of Torino, looking at uh, color stability uh, in different groups of varieties. And varieties were grouped according to their composition in anthocyanin. The aim of the study was to see if uh, additions of tannins, exogenous tannins, in the first 72 hours of maceration can affect the stability and how. So for this purpose, uh, we looked at about 27, I think it was a variety, it's definitely more than 20s, and grouped them together by mean of uh, uh, their composition of anthocyanin. So how many acylated anthocyanin, which is like the most resistant color that can be uh, in the skin. How much of the malvidin, which is a three substituted, rather uh, unique, uh, stable, but hard to extract anthocyanin. How much of the delphinidin, how much of the pe peonidin and petunidin, which are less stable. Um, and so important to see if they're there because they need to be protected and stabilized. So by looking at the composition and how it's stacked, we basically formed uh, five families originally uh, of cousins, uh, Syrah being cousin of Turiga Nacional, Montepulciano d'Abruzzo, Terol, Dego Barbera, Carmener, being cousins with Merlot and Cab Sauvignon, Negramaro, Tempranillo, Aglianico, Primitivo, Malbec, Nero d'Avola, Pinotage in group three, group four with uh, Pinot Noir being cousins with uh, Sangiovese, and then group five, which is just Nebbiolo, very important in, in this research because it's done in Torino and uh, Nebbiolo is uh, a very unique and very important grape uh, in Piemonte. So when we're done with this uh, five groups, then for our commercial studies, we reduced it to four groups um, where we integrated uh, Syrah in the Merlot Cab group. Uh, we see how, for example, in the Pinot Noir and Sangiovese, in this uh, graph, the um, acylated um, anthocyanin, so the most resistant color, is basically non-existent. We have a good amount of peonidin, for example, um, in the Pinot Noir um, Nebbiolo groups. But peonidin, uh, we just said, that is not uh, very stable. So uh, is the chanidin, which is also a good chunk of the color. Um, chanidin, along with delphinidin and petunidin, uh, are also very easy to extract. So we extract them first, and this is another difference between uh, the anthocyanin, other than being more or less resistant uh, to oxidation, are more or less um, extracted in the first uh, 72 hours, which was the focus of the study here. So chanidin and petunidin and delphinidin turn out to be very easily extracted in the first 72 hours, as reported also in the literature mentioned here, but they are very sensitive to oxidation, and so they need to be protected. Here is a graph from also previous literature uh, that shows um, how basically after three days, uh, this uh, desubstituted um, pigments reach their max, whereas malvidin keeps growing afterwards. So what happened in the first 72 hours of the study? For our group four and five, uh, with the Pinot Noir, the Sangiovese, and then the Biolo, the Cabrazzo tannins were really useful um, for shielding the oxygen, worked sometimes even better than the Lasic, that are more famous, uh, more oak tannin are uh, used a lot for protecting from oxidation. But these Cabrazzo tannins were able to protect from oxidation, eliminate oxygen from the media, and also polymerize the color in a, a stable uh, pigment. So it really worked well uh, in this first 72 hours to protect the color. In fact, uh, for Pinot Noir, uh, Sangiovese, and, the, and Nebbiolo, early tannin addition uh, resulted in the study very remarkable. In particular, uh, Cabrasso showed an effective ability in preserving delphinidin, chamidin, Peonidin giving significantly higher results with respect of the control. We're talking 26.7 to 84.4% more of these pigments when using Cabrazzo in the first 72 hours. Um, also, there was um, more of the Petunidin, we're talking 31.2%. 
In Nebbiolo, we also notice an effect um, of um, elagic tannin in protecting the color that brought the anacylated tannidin uh, to being higher than the control by 37.5 to 84.4%. So for Nebbiolo, definitely also the elagic addition had a good effect. What about the high malvidin varieties, like for example, the Montepulciano and the Cabernet Sauvignon? Um, well, they definitely benefited from the addition, uh, early addition of Quebracho, because this variety not only have malvidin, but they also uh, carry uh, chanidin and delphinidin. So by preserving these um, two pigments, the color uh, was increased. Other than that, the malvidin, um, didn't really, uh, there wasn't really a difference in uh, preserving the malvidin when using the Quebracho. We noticed that uh, there was um, more malvidin being preserved in those varieties uh, where the tannins, the phenolics from the skins and from the seeds were higher. So this suggested another study and um, adding tannins from skins and seeds resulted in a more stable malvidin after the 72 hours. So that's something that uh, has been taken in consideration in the formulation of the products that we're going to talk later. Seeds and skin tannins really affect the stability of the malvidin after the 72 hours. Um, and that's when the malvidin comes out. So another study that uh, we want to do is to see how enzymes can affect the extraction of malvidin after the 72 hours. So a late addition of uh, enzyme can uh, affect the extraction. So the formulation of the tannin that resulted from the study uh, brought to three different uh, products that uh, can be used uh, for a situation where malvidin is prevalent uh, or high, like uh, Cabernet, uh, Barbera, Merlot, Teroldigo, Montepulciano varieties. Uh, here we said uh, we need the seed tannin, we need skin tannins, for later uh, polymerization of the malvidin, we need quebracho to protect uh, the um, less stable color uh, in the first 72 hours. So a composition, a formulation of the, these two kinds of, uh, three kinds of tannins uh, in Fermotan CB. Fermotan AG stands for alianico, as elagic for protection from oxygen and also uh, for um, helping the polymerization of the color. And then it's completed with Quebracho, which we have seen is uh, the best in the first 72 hours to preserve and polymerize color. And there are also grape derived tannins because also in this group, uh, malvidin is quite prevalent. For uh, the Fermotan SG, which is for Sangiovese, Pinot Noir, and Nebbiolo, uh, we have uh, a shield of protection with really reactive elagic tannins, but also with the Quebracho that proved to be the best for polymerization and protection um, of this color. So I hope you learned something today. Um, I did. And hopefully uh, we'll see you uh, soon. This video is recorded during the shelter in place. Um, so we're not seeing anybody these days, but hopefully we can uh, come to you with these videos and, uh, and see you in real life when it's gonna be possible. Have a great day.